Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you every single way you can use to add API key authentication in your ASP.NET Core applications so you can choose the one that works for you. We're going to take a look at general approaches, controller based approaches, minimal API based approaches and I'm also going to show you how you can add Swagger support so when you're consumer of your API or your system go to the Open API Swagger page they can use the authorize button and provide the API key there so they can have the best experience you can provide. I made a video like this all the way back in 2019 and a lot has changed since then so I want to have a new complete version for you so that's your one stop shop for API API key authentication. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the sub notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsus.com. All right, let me show you what I have here. I have a simple ASP.NET Core application. And the most important thing to understand is that we're going to use no third party NuGet packages. This is all built in stuff. The only packages I have are the ones that come with the template, which is the open API, so we can have Swagger support. And really, before I show you anything, I want to explain the fundamental of how an API key authentication system works. Usually, you have two approaches. The first one is that service A wants to talk to service B and service B only wants to accept requests from authenticated services. This is usually done in internal services in companies. So service B has a static key that it accepts API requests on and service A needs to provide it either using a query string parameter or a header. There are of course other ways you can use to do service to service authentication, but this is a fine approach. The most important thing to understand about it though is that service B doesn't care that service A is calling it or service C is calling it or service D is calling it. Any service that calls it will use that single API key and the consumer doesn't really matter. The other side of the story is when you have dynamic keys and you can create keys for different consumers. So if Nick is using the Open Weather Map API, for example, then I can go in the API, log in, create an API key, and then use that API key. But the Open Weather Map API knows that I am Nick and I am rate limited, I am monitored, it knows that it is me. So that's a different scenario. In this video, we're going to cover this static version of the key because the dynamic aspect can be just plugged in using the exact same code. So I'm just going to keep it as easy for you to follow as possible so you can grab the code from the description and do whatever you want with it. Now, for video purposes, I'm going to store the API key in app settings, but you don't want to do that. You want to use something that is designed to store secrets and API keys for example, AWS Service Manager or Azure Key Vault or any other service designed to do that sort of thing. But in this case, I'm just going to say authentication over here and have the API key. The other thing I want to do is create a directory called authentication so I can have all my authentication logic in there. And the first thing I'm going to do is create an auth constant class. Now, this will be a static class containing constants. So I'm going to have two things. The first one is the path to the setting in my app setting, so it's authentication and API key, because this is authentication and API key. And the other thing is actually the header name I'm going to use to provide the API key, because the approach we're going to use is use the X API key header to pass the key here. You can use a query string parameter as well, but I prefer the API key being on the header. Now, first, let's define an API key, and I'm going to go with the simplest approach. I'm just going to create a GUID over here, use that. I'm going to remove all the hyphens I don't particularly need them here and I'm just going to copy it and put it here so every request that will be authenticated will need to use this key and now I'm going to go with my first approach which is the generic approach which is using a middleware so I'm going to go ahead and create a new middleware over here called API key auth middleware now middleware has two main components you don't need to implement any interface which makes it a bit interesting of an implementation but what you need to have is a private read-only request delegate over here and usually you call that next because it's your way to call the next thing in the middleware pipeline in the request pipeline and you inject that from the constructor and then you also have an invoke async method that has an http context parameter over here and this parameter gives you access to things like the request the response so you can write the response and so on now the first thing we need to do over here is to actually check hey do you have an x api key header so i can get the key and validate it if not i'm going to tell you that the api key is not there so we're going to do that very simply by saying context request headers try get the value of the api key header name and if you did not find one, then simply return 401 unauthorized and say API key is missing. And that is it. Now to do the validation, I actually have to get the API key from configuration. So what I'm going to do is inject the private read only I configuration over here and then 
pass it down here to grab the API key using the get value and then the section name or the path name of the options. And of course, you could have your own option containing the key, or you can inject any logic here to call, let's say, secrets manager to load that key to do the operation that would go here. And then the rest of the logic goes as you'd expect. Does the API key match the extracted one? If it doesn't, 401, invalid API key. If it does, then simply use the request delegate and pass down the context to move to the next request in the pipeline. So the only thing I need to do now is actually register the middleware. And middleware is actually sequential, so you don't want to have it before things like Swagger or maybe things like HTTPS redirection. I'm going to have it before authorization. So I'm going to say app.use middleware, and I'm going to pass down the API key of middleware. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and just debug the API. And first, I'm going to remove the API key from the header. So if I send a request now, I'm getting API key is missing. If I provide it, but it's wrong, then I'm going to get invalid API key. And if I provide the right one, I'm going to get the weather. That's it. That's how easy it is. Now, this general approach, the first one, is great if you want to cover everything in your API behind this API key authentication. However, often this is not the case. Often you want more control. So I'm going to start showing you how you can control it further by showing you another approach called an auth filter, authorization filter. I'm going to go ahead and create an API key auth filter over here. And here you get to choose which interface you want to implement. Do you want it to be something that supports async? Then you want to go with iAsync authorization filter. And then if you implement the missing members, you get the on authorization async. Do you not need it to be async like we don't need it in this video? Then I'm going to say i authorization filter and you're going to get a void version instead. Same thing though. Now, like before, we're going to need this i configuration, so we're going to inject it. And what I'm going to do is simply copy the code as it is from here and show you the differences between the middleware and the filter. So here we still have a context, but this context is different. This context, it's not the HTTP request context. You still have it in here. So HTTP context with access to everything, but you also have some things like filters, uh, action description, model state, route data, and also result, which is a nullable value. This is very interesting because the way you return something from a filter is actually by setting the result. You don't pass it to the next thing in the middleware. You just say result is this and you return and you're going to exit early. So I'm going to still use this HTTP context to get the header, but instead of writing the response like this, all I'm going to say is say result equals new unauthorized object result. And that is it. And I'm going to copy the same thing over here. Use the invalid API key name. And that's it. And you don't call the next thing in the pipeline. And in terms of code, this is it. That's all. Now, there's two ways to work with filters. The first one is to go in the controller, the add controllers method and say filters dot add and add the API key or filter. And this will be added for every controller you have in the system. So if I say debug over here and I go back in, then if I have the right key, everything works. If I don't have a key at all, API key is missing. If I have a wrong key, API key invalid and unauthorized. And that's it. But that's one of the ways, because now we still have the same problem that every controller has this filter attached to it. So I'm going to just comment it out in case you want to grab it and do something with it. And I'm going to say builder.services.add scoped because filters are scoped the same way controllers are scoped. And I'm going to say API key auth filter. Now, just by registering, I didn't do anything. But what I can do now is go to the controller itself over here. And I have two options. Either on the controller, if I want it to be applied to every action in it or the action directly, I can go and say service filter type of API key of controller. And now I have applied the filter just to this thing. And just to prove it, I'm going to just quickly copy this and say whether two over here, but have this not have the filter. So I'm going to just quickly run this and I'm going to go here. And again, if I don't have an API key, API key is missing. If I have it, but it is invalid, API key invalid. If I have it and it's valid, then I get the weather. But if I say weather two over here and I have an invalid key, then that is not affected. I'm still getting the thing. If I don't include it, then I'm still getting the thing because now I've used the service filter to apply it 
only on this action. I can move this if I want over here on the controller and have it be applied for every action in the controller, completely up to me. I'm just going to move it where it was and comment it out in case you want to grab it and do something with it. But now I'm going to show you something very interesting with that filter. You can actually go here and add the attribute type and say that this now also extends attribute and it's also an I authorization filter. There's something very interesting with this. Nothing will break in the existing code. In fact, if I just have it here, this will just work and go back here. I can call the request. Nothing broke. If I say whether, then API key is missing. Everything is working. But now I can actually copy this name, remove this service filter, and use it as an attribute directly. We have a bit of a problem, however. Configuration is injected. So I cannot use it like this because I'm injecting the configuration. So if you wanted to use it with this approach, you'd have to actually get configuration from the HTTP context. So you would say configuration equals context dot HTTP context dot request services dot get required service I configuration. And then you'd have to use it here. If you do that, then the API key auth filter is working. I'm going to go ahead and just build it. And if you prefer this approach, you can use it to have the exact same experience as you can see. And again, everything in the second action is not part of this authentication. Now, I personally don't prefer this approach because it makes mocking things way more difficult when I'm testing my filters. So I prefer to use the service filter approach and pass it down like this. But that's completely up to you. I'm just going to show you both ways and you can choose. These are basically all the simplest flexible ways you can use to apply this in controllers. But what about minimal APIs, which is supposed to be the future? Well, I'm going to go below this map controllers method and I'm going to add the exact same logic, but in a map get request, which is that minimal API request. And I'm going to go here and show you that if I run this API and call whether mini, then I can just call it. It doesn't matter if I have an API key or not. What's important to understand is that if I use the middleware over here, then every authentication related thing in the middleware is applied to minimal APIs because middleware is pipeline agnostic. It just says I am in the pipeline and whatever is below me, I don't care. It can be a controller. It can be a minimal API. It doesn't matter. However, we cannot use the API key auth filter with minimal APIs, neither as an attribute nor as an I authorization filter. That's a completely different type of filter for controllers. So if I try to do I don't know, something like using the uh, service filter thing over here, and I just try to apply it on the delegate, and I just quickly remove this and I run it, then it actually runs, as you can see, it starts. But if I try to call it, it doesn't really do anything. It just completely ignores the attribute. So keep that in mind. You cannot use your controller based filter with a minimal API, but that is fine because now we have endpoint filters specific for minimal APIs. So what we're going to do is create a new class called API key endpoint filter, and I'm going to have that implement the I endpoint filter interface. And now I have this invoke async method and it is async by default, and I can have all my logic in here. I'm going to turn this into an async value task and I'm going to start implementing. So the first thing I need to do, of course, is again, inject the configuration over here. And the approach in here is an interesting one because it's a mix of sort of the filter and the middleware approach. So in the end, yes, if you want to move on in the pipeline, you're going to say return await next and pass down the context, which is no longer the HTTP context. It is an endpoint filter invocation context, but it does, if you look in here, contain the HTTP context if you really need to. But now if I add the exact same extraction and checking logic as before, we don't really set a result over here. We just sort of return using the results or the typed results over here. And we say, okay, accepted, whatever. We can say unauthorized. So we can do this and that would work. Now, one thing to point out here is that I can't actually pass down a message if I wanted to. So I've actually made my own type that is unauthorized with a body, either a string or a JSON body. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly create it so you can all see it. I'm going to call it unauthorized HTTP object result over here. And it looks like this. So it has an object body. If the body is a string, it just writes it as a string. If it is any other type of object, then it serializes it and writes it as an object 
and that is it. So what I'm going to return here is first return a new unauthorized HTTP object result API key missing and same thing here, but invalid API key. So now that I have that, I can go here and I can say add endpoint filter and I can specify the type. So API key endpoint filter. And now I can apply it on that item itself. So if I go ahead and I run it, then I can go here. I can call it without one API key missing. I can call it with the wrong one invalid API key, I can call it with the right one, it all works. And this, by the way, will work the same if you use a group. So if you have an app.map group and you have a weather group over here and you specify it like this, and then you register the thing in the group and you register the endpoint in the group as well. So then if I just quickly run this and I go back here, this should now be weather forward slash weather mini. So if I call it, as you can see, it all works, but if I don't have that API key, API key missing, but if I do have it and it is wrong, API key invalid, and that is it. So everything in that group will be authenticated. And really, in terms of approaches, that's it. That covers everything. Controllers, minimal APIs, general middleware, everything is covered. But there's one thing that many people are missing, which is how do you add Swagger support? Because if I go ahead and I just run this thing over here, let me just quickly revert the, let's say, the API key auth filter on the controller level as well. If I go ahead and I debug it and I use a Swagger interface, and sorry if I blinded you, then as you can see, I have all my endpoints, but I can't really authenticate to call it. I'm going to try to call it, but it's going to say, you know, 401, I, what are you expecting me to do? So how do we add authentication support in Swagger? It's extremely easy, actually. What I'm going to do is just go to the program.cs over here at the very top where you have the add swagger gen and I'm going to go into the lambda in here where I can customize everything I want. You really need three things. The first one is a security definition and that looks something like this. You just define how you're accepting your security. In this case, I'm saying that the name is API key. The name over here, which represents the header is X API key. It's located in the header and the scheme is API key scheme. And that is it. The type is API key. Next, I need to define the scheme in the object. So I'm going to have the scheme here. It's a header, API key, and so on. And then I'm going to use that scheme into a requirement. And then all I'm going to say is add the security requirement using that requirement that uses the scheme. And that is it. Now, exactly as it is, I can go ahead and debug it. And if I go back to Swagger and I refresh, now I have this authorized button and I can pass down the value. And the value here is this one with a missing seven in the end. So if I go and I paste it and I authorize, then now I can call all the endpoints, as you can see, and I'm getting the weather. And if I don't have it, I log out and I execute 401. That's it. This is how simple it is. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I covered everything, I think. But if I did not cover something, leave a comment down below and I will help you. But for now, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe more, click the like, hitting the bell as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.